Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has renewed his appeal for F-16 fighter jets less than a week after securing heavy tanks from Western backers. Poland says that it would support a NATO effort to send the jets to Ukraine. Now, officials from France and the U.S. say that they have not ruled out the option. But German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has drawn a red line over supplying Kyiv with combat aircraft. I asked defense analyst Marina Myron from the War Studies Department at King's College London if she expects Zelensky to get the fighter jets and missiles he is asking for. It's quite a difficult question now after supplying or agreeing to supply the tanks and, you know, Russia's reaction. And uh, diplomatically, I see it as a very challenging task because, um, well, first of all, we don't know how Russia will react to the tank deliveries. And the second thing, we also have to think about uh, when those aircraft would reach Ukraine. Um, that would mean that there would have to be some sort of NATO involvement because it will take a long time to train the pilots to operate even um, something like an F-16, which is not as sophisticated as F-35. And obviously the fighter jets would be uh, vulnerable to Russian uh, ground-based air defense systems. So that's another issue we're facing. And we also have the crews um, that are important. It's not just a pilot. We have to train entire crews. So how long will it take? A year, a two, uh, two years? And another question is, where will those planes be fielded in Ukraine? That would mean that there, there will need to be engineers trained or sent to Ukraine to do the maintenance to, and sustainment of the airplane. So there are all sorts of mm. issues associated those. Okay. I mean, it's highly speculative at this point because we know that uh, no country has agreed to send um, those. But um, we had the announcement of the past week uh, that tanks are heading toward Ukraine. So tell us about the logistical challenges that that now um, poses uh, for the Ukrainians and, and their partners. In terms of logistics, there will need to be new uh, supply lines established for each of those three variants of tanks, including uh, fuel, for instance, the Abrams tank uses jet fuel as opposed to um, diesel that is used by the Leopard 2, then they all use different types of ammunition. Um, Abrams will need deplet depleted uranium rounds. Um, the Challenger 2 has the so-called hash rounds and the 120 millimeter heat rounds for the Leopard. So there is quite a lot of logistical footprint that is involved in this whole thing, a, a, a training aside. Um, so it, it will create a very heavy logistical footprint to field those tanks, the, the, the three kinds of tanks in Ukraine. And, you, you know, I, I believe it will take uh, two to three months to deal just with the logistics. How about the fear of escalation? Because um, we've heard Russia come out and basically say that this is indeed um, what they see as a provocation. Are, are you concerned about the potential that um, Ukraine's partners might be now seen as direct parties to the conflict? I think Russia has been perceiving Ukraine's partners as parties to the conflict for a while now, so this would be nothing new. Uh, we might see more um, nuclear rhetoric being used by the Kremlin, but I think um, every, we are all expecting some sort of escalation on the battlefield. However, I think we have to look a little bit at the broader picture right. and you know, Russia's diplomatic efforts um, to secure allies and to secure support to counterbalance the West. So I think the response, the overall response, will be much more nuanced and is planned for a long term rather than mm. kind of a short -term escalation on the battlefield, which might still take place. Marina Myron from the War Studies Department at King's College London. Thank you. Thank you very much. With a renewed Russian offensive expected in the spring, Kyiv is considering its options. U.S. advisors are suggesting Ukraine moves its focus away from the besieged city of Bakhmut and use new weapons to fight on the southeastern front. But for President Volodymyr Zelensky and those still holding out in Bakhmut, that decision is not an easy one. For nearly six months now, Russia has waged a brutal battle to take the city of Bakhmut, and so far failed. 
but at a heavy cost to Ukraine. This makeshift cemetery on the outskirts of the city shows the scale of the loss. Bakhmut is located between Donetsk and Luhansk at the edge of the front line in the Donbass region. A victory there could give Russia a base to launch a campaign further west. It would also be a blow to Ukrainian morale. Zelensky said the fighting there was key to the war. Every day the enemy fails on the Bakhmut front and in Donbass in general is a significant blow to the aggressor state. U.S. advisors to Ukraine say that it's not worth the cost in Ukrainian lives. Russia has already shelled the city to rubble, leaving little to defend but a symbol. The U.S. is recommending Ukraine shift its focus to the south, where Western deliveries of armored vehicles could set up Kiev for a renewed counteroffensive. The city of Kherson was recaptured by Ukraine in November, and Russia has ramped up pressure this winter across the southern front line. As Kiev looks toward spring, it's expecting a large Russian offensive, with the possible mobilization of thousands of new invading troops. NATO said weapons deliveries will help Ukraine prepare. And Russia is planning for new offensives. They are building heavily up. They are mobilized hundreds of thousands of new troops, uh, ramping up production, acquiring ammunition from authoritarian regimes like Iran, uh, um, uh, North Korea, uh, and and, uh, and therefore, uh, we have to be prepared for uh, new Russian offensives. That's exactly why the announcements made last week are so important, um, uh, with more armor, more ammunition, more also long-range uh, 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 weapons like the HIMARS, uh, but also the new announcements uh, of uh, battle tanks. The U.S. Defense Department says it's unlikely Russia can turn around its failures anytime soon. But it also says Ukraine cannot expect to expel Russia from the Donbass by the end of this year. Now, for weeks we've been hearing that the Battle of Bakhmut is at a stalemate. So I asked military expert Frank Ledwidge if Russian troops could soon gain the advantage in that fight. Well, good afternoon, Anthony. I think, yes, it could if what we're hearing from the Americans is true. It's worth stressing the report there that Bakhmut matters only because both sides have made it matter. So it's a question of casualties on both sides, balancing those against the moral effect of withdrawal. Now, the important thing here from the American perspective, I think, is that Ukraine withdraws on its own terms. And I think eventually they'll have to do that. Let's not forget that that's, it's not the first time that Ukraine has done that and made a propaganda success out of it. Last June, as I recall, they did exactly that from Severodonetsk after an equally bloody and important battle then. So that's why the Americans are so insistent, really, that the Ukrainians cut their losses now, withdraw under their own terms before they're forced out. Fascinating moment coming up in this war, Frank. Russia plans to mobilise an additional 500,000 soldiers. Whatever that number is, a large number. As Western allies have pledged to send a little over 100 tanks. What wins out? Overwhelming manpower, that being Russia, or superior hardware, the Ukraine? The latter is the answer. It, it's often said that uh, quantity has a quality all its own, and that's true in military terms, provided on the ground you can provide some armoured protection and plans and doctrine for your quantity. And hitherto the Russians have not demonstrated the capability to do that. This is an artillery war primarily, the Ukrainians major on precision artillery. The new armor that they're getting, which, by the way, does not only is not only the tanks, that's only the most prominent. They are getting an, a great deal more of armored mobility in the form of armored vehicles, armored cars, infantry fighting vehicles. And it's those that are going to win out here in an artillery soaked battlefield. It's no good having unprotected infantry poorly led in an artillery soaked battlefield where you're up against precision guided uh, uh, shells with uh, equipment that's far superior to your own. So the answer to your question is, Ukrainians will win out eventually. It's going to take a long time. It'll be very painful. But that's, that's the way I see this balance going. The tanks were a big victory for the Ukrainian president. Zelensky now wants fighter jets and missiles too. Is he going to get them, Frank? Yes, I think he will eventually. The answer to Ukraine's question of how to defend themselves does not lie in F-16s in the short or even medium term, Anthony. The reason they're looking for these, and will probably get them, certainly the Netherlands have given indications, probably Norway has some spare, and of course, the Americans, if they give the export licenses, which I heard a lot about over the last couple of weeks, will be able to backfill 
any issues from European allies. But what Ukraine is trying to do, it's trying to shift its armed forces on the ground and in the air to NATO standards. So they're not looking ahead really, I think, for the next six months. They're looking ahead for the next one year, two year, three years to provide long-term security for themselves. And that's wise. But F-16s in the short or medium term won't make a difference on the battlefield. But to answer your question directly, I think they will get them, but it's going to take a while to deploy them. And it will be an extremely labor intensive task, far more so, I think, than with the tanks, which will be deployed far sooner and are now far more important. Always a pleasure. Military analyst Frank Ledwidge, thanks so much for your input.